Um, hi there, everyone. A very warm welcome to you. My name's Susanna Warren, and I'm the director of music and member events at the Arts Club. Uh, it's really great to see so many of you joining us, um, and I hope you've been keeping safe and well. So welcome to tonight's webinar, The Picture of Health, um, with Lanzerhoff at the Arts Club, um, who are our partners and they're a medical facility which is a walk-in facility open to non-members of the Arts Club. Um, as you all know, early detection of degenerative and life-threatening conditions, including cancer and uh, organ damage, really does increase the chance of a successful recovery. Um, and of course, diagnostic testing plays an essential role in this process. Uh, I'm so pleased, therefore, to be introducing Lanzerhoff at the Arts Club consultant radiologist, Dr. Amanda Isaac, um, who's here to give us an introduction to some advanced diagnostic techniques, such as uh, the whole body MRI scan. Uh, Dr. Amanda is an experienced musculoskeletal diagnostic and uh, interventional consultant in Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital. Um, and she graduated from both the Royal College of Radiologists and the Royal College of um, Surgeons within the UK. Her practice includes complex orthopedic and spine disorders, um, so pain management, sports medicine, joint diseases, uh, bone and soft tissue cancer and infections. So she really can give us a comprehensive understanding of why early detection um, and effective treatment plans are really integral to our muscles, tendons, bones, cardiac reproductive organs, uh, brain and, and other organs. I'm also delighted that Dr. Ursula Levine, one of our GPs at Lanzerhof, who specializes in integrative medicine, will be in conversation with Dr. Amanda. Um, and Dr. Ursula has over 30 years of experience um, clinically combining Western and traditional Chinese medicine with trauma therapy elements. So if any of you have any questions over the course of the talk, um, don't hesitate to just type them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screens. Uh, I know some of you have already submitted questions, so as many of these will be answered over the course of the talk and then um, during the Q&A at the end. So enjoy everyone and I'll now hand you over to Dr. Amanda and Dr. Ursula. Hello, good evening everybody. Hi Amanda. So let's dive into the topic. We have a lot to cover and let's just start with my first question for you. What is a whole body MRI? Okay. Hi, better. <laughs> thank you, Ursula, and thank you very much for inviting me for this talk. Um, today we will talk about the um, picture of health, uh, what we look for, and um, why we um, why this is so important uh, more um, than ever before. Um, these are my affiliations and why this uh, topic is very uh, dear to my heart and um, why I would like to share that with you. So the concept of balance and harmony has been there almost in all cultures and civilizations. Um, and this is represented by Leonardo da Vinci, who's all, one of the um, uh, original arts club members uh, in uh, his um, uh, drawings. And really it's about uh, the um, balance, be overall balance between uh, mind, body and soul um, and the different organs and how they work with each other so that determine how our bodies respond to our day-to-day -day, um, interactions. And any imbalance may predispose to uh, diseases. With modern medicine, we can now detect these diseases fairly early and uh, we have clever ways of looking at it before it causes a lot of problems. Um, and this is why uh, radiology is now very important because it's part of that process. Um, why does it matter? Because we can prevent disease and we can detect it early. 
And if we do detect it early, we have ways of managing it with um, fairly um, lower complications and uh, problems. Um, so the patient um, gets um, better care and feels better faster as well. There are a lot of evidence-based pathways and programs in the UK, which I will briefly touch on. And we're very um, fortunate and, um, and I'm proud to say that we're able to offer this in Lanzarote at the Arts Club. And I'll be going through the various um, imaging facilities and services that we offer here and how they integrate into the bigger picture of Lanzarote and how we work together as a team to provide these services. And at the end, there'll be a QA session. So please feel free to ask us any questions you would like that are relevant to you. So we have national and targeted screening programs in the UK. Uh, the most famous one is the breast program, but we also have different ones for prostate, for aorta and for bowel. And in small cohorts of patients where we know that there are risk factors that we need to look at and address, there are targeted screening. Why does it matter? Because we can now image these and identify different ways of diagnosing these conditions early and directing them to the appropriate experts that can manage this condition uh, with uh, very little complications, if any. So Ursula asked me, what is a whole body MRI scan? We have this uh, fantastic machine in uh, the basement of uh, Lanzarote at the Arts Club, which is in Dover Street. Um, and basically the patient lies down comfortably on a table that goes in and out of a magnet. So it's a magnet um, that is able to detect water uh, present in our cells and it's everywhere in the body. And it can provide very quick images like the one that you can see on the far right. And, and that means that we can look at all of the body with, that, with a patient lying down comfortably on a bed rather than opening up and exploring like we used to do uh, in the old days with surgery. And this is fairly accurate. The concept of whole body screening is all around us. So back in the days when you used to travel because before uh, Corona and hopefully again soon, um, we go through an airport security that shows the, um, that does exactly that whole body screening. Um, and it's designed to look at things that are relevant to that setting. So in an airport, you only want to be looking at metalwork or any um, objects that are legal or illegal and be able to pick them up. So whole body screening is optimized based on technology to adapt to what we are trying to look for. The beauty of whole body MRI scans are that they don't have any radiation. So babies can go through it, pregnant women can go through it. Um, and basically there's no side effects to go through it, unlike x-rays and CTs and other modalities, and even the airport scanner, which is based on x-rays. So is it really a scan of the whole body? Um, we can scan head to toe, but the question is how long would a patient lie on the scanner and how relevant is that to their condition? So um, we try to optimize the protocols so that they have the highest steel that is relevant to that patient. And most protocols scan from the top of the head to just above the knees. Um, why? Because that statistically is what's going to show us the most common relevant findings. But in conditions where we know that the disease spreads beyond that region, we do image that and include it. So it's very important before the patient lies on the scanner that we identify why we're doing the scan and how relevant it is to the patient's condition. And basically we can scan if we need to, um, but it's a balance. So uh, at Lanzerhof, we are a center of integrative medicine. So we combine diagnostics and therapies that are individual and bespoke. So uh, are you uh, going to speak about who is, uh, should have a whole body MRI? Yes. Um, so whole body screening uh, is a concept um, and it started in the early 80s um, based on corporate. So um, big corporations and Wall Street and um, identified their uh, employees as one of the major investments in these companies and they wanted to do health screening to optimize their health um, and in order to do that they wanted something substantive so not just sending them to doctors to say that they're okay. So we started screening um, back in the 70s and 80s for individuals with no symptoms 
Um, and really this is only possible because healthcare is able to offer that. So this is one of the studies where 22 super healthy health conscious managers were screened. They were fairly young, so most of them were under 50, um, and there were only 22. Out of this one patient, one individual unfortunately had cancer, but it was early and they were able to manage him uh, appropriately and early, so he had lower complications and required less surgery and interventions. And it was interesting because 22 out of, uh, 20 out of the 22, so almost all of them, had various abnormalities. Now, not all of them are um, serious and uh, concerning, so it's good to know what, which ones are relevant. And looking at the, the individuals in that small study, about 68% needed more imaging or uh, they, they were able to pick up things that required further imaging. So, or further interventions, but we have clever technology to do that. Again, a lot of this would require um, imaging with no radiation. So the patient is not exposed to harm. We're able to tell them what's going on and able to direct them whether they need follow-up or whether they need further um, management or um, whether they don't need to worry about it and just know that this uh, is a cyst somewhere in, um, in their body, uh, etc. So screening is also age-related, and other studies looked at the larger groups of patients, and they found that um, age of 50 is a relative uh, fair cutoff. Um, so the risk of serious abnormalities or lumps and bumps that require further attention grows with all patients over 50. And this is just an image to show, so the gray is over 50, uh, white is under 50. And for each of these conditions, you can see that gray is much, much more than white. And this study looked at this and decided that um, over the age of 50, it's very important to do screening, even if you have no symptoms. Um, we do find findings, which we call incidental, in up to 80%. So eight out of 10 people we will image, we will find findings, but only five to 40% will require something done about them. And the risk of cancer is very low, but it's there. So if we find cancer before it causes symptoms, we're still able to save that group of patients very early on, offer them um, fairly uh, less invasive uh, treatments and improve their outcomes. And the statistics here was mainly looking at brain and prostate and lung, but we know that it happens in other organs. So the recommendations were there that we need to scan and screen patients with no symptoms. You don't have to have a condition to just have a checkup. And it's really um, integrated into the culture of having a general checkup and making sure that you are well. Optimizing health means that you can do something about your body fairly early and we can get the body into an optimal state as opposed to a general state that they are at now. Um, nine out of 10 of these lesions that we pick up are fairly benign. They don't mean anything and they don't need anything done about them. 10%, so one in 10, which is a fairly high number, requires um, further attention in more detail because it's cancer relevant. So it's either a cancer or something that may cause cancer if left um, untreated. But the overall rate of finding a cancer there and then is 1%. So it's fairly low, but again, it's one patient that we can save. And that's really the basis of screening. So we moved from um, um, this or all of this into precision health. and. What we want is to do bespoke uh, health improvement protocols based uh, and designed for each patient based on their profile. So their age, their gender, their health conditions, family risk factors, um, associated conditions that they may have, whether they're diabetic, hypertensive, their job is stressful, uh, whether they sleep well or don't sleep well, um, or their overall profile. Um, and we have expertise in-house that is able to do that clinically. Um, and Ursula will, um, might be able to explain a little bit more about integrative health in this. 
Yes, in, in, well, as I said before, integrative medicine means that we combine different therapies, so more conventional or traditional therapies and treatments. So it's bespoke for the uh, individual patient. Yeah. So we tailor make a di the diagnostics and the treatment um, to the patient's need and. To do that, we need to work together as a team. So this is, I think you will talk about this a little bit later about our referral pathways, because it has to be, and as we are doctors, before we do any treatment, there has to be a clear diagnosis. And for this diagnosis, uh, we are all specialists from our individual fields. As you said, there is not only the whole body MRI, but also the cardiac aspect or the, the hormonal aspect. So me as the GP or our uh, cardiologist, Dr. Michael Papadakis, or, or the medical director, Dr. Kunz from the musculoskeletal side and yourself, we work together, we meet on a regular basis and we decide then in our pathways what is the best for this individual patient. Definitely. And, um, and obviously, excuse me, when I just chip in here uh, uh, again. Uh, we are talking about prevention and I think the numbers that you just brought are very impressive. Yeah, right. So it's see, we see that how important prevention is and it's, uh, you know, uh, we want to know, yeah, or the question is, do we want to know? And obviously we, we see the patients who want to, to know and to want to be aware of their risks or of their health conditions. And the, the awareness is, is the first stage of um, further diagnosis and treatment, right? Yes. Um, and it's, um, this paper sums it up nicely by saying it's first come, first served, as first saved, which means that the earlier we can find conditions and treat them, the earlier we're able to um, target them. But this has to be combined with other things. So the risk factors, uh, medications, genetic counseling, which we can also offer in-house in Lanzarov, plays an important part in this. So a whole body is not just for cancers. Um, we started with this because it's really the most uh, serious condition, but it, we're also targeting about optimizing health. So it's not just cancer. Uh, this is an MRI where we look at muscle uh, issues and muscle diseases. Um, this is relevant for people that have had several conditions where they were um, in bed for a long time, like with COVID recently. Um, diabetics, athletes that have trauma, uh, people that were involved in um, large accidents and, and massive uh, um, operations. So also this gives us an indication about which parts of the body we need to um, target first. Liver screening is a big part of uh, whole body MRIs um, and it's quite relevant because the statistics are from the uh, Department of Health so nationally is that one in ten patients people in the UK will experience liver disease um, and it's very variable so it can be mild but it can be quite serious. Um, one of the main uh, problems with it is um, fatty liver and fatty liver is um, partly genetic, partly because of diet, partly because of uh, obesity. Um, and it's quite relevant because it can cause irreversible damage to the liver. However, if we detect it early and we reverse these um, prevented, uh, preventable conditions that we're able to reverse the condition in the liver and own, basically you get a brand new liver because it's able to regenerate itself. See, this is, this is what I find so fascinating because the diagnostics and the treatment go so well together, right? As, as you might know that in, at Lanzerhof, you know, the core element is uh, detox, fasting programs. So uh, health, uh, and disease, health and disease prevention, right? So when we concentrate on the liver and on the detox, yeah, and uh, uh, especially in times like this, everybody is very health conscious and talks a lot about detox. So we can incorporate the, the liver scan in our extensive blood uh, testing that we do to scan the liver um, beforehand, uh, before we do any treatments. So this is very, very helpful. 
Um, yes, it is. And we're relying on body healing power. So we all have these uh, systems in our body that can heal, but we need to allow it, uh, optimize the conditions in which the body can achieve uh, healing. And fasting is one of them, um, as well as many others that we offer here at Lanzaroff. Um, and simple things every day do make a cumulative difference to the body. But when we detect these, um, imaging is able to give numbers to these values. So it's not just says, oh, your liver is bad. It says how bad and where is it? And that means that we can have a baseline to work against and try to improve the patient's condition. So um, in medicine in general, we believe that knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you're able to tell the patient and the more that you're able to offer them options. And modern imaging allows us to do that because we can quantify we can give a number to how bad it is on a scale. So we're able to monitor it and improve on it. This is one of the examples of how the imaging uh, helps because it's able to detect fat and iron overload and other conditions and it's able to give percentages and functions. And when we do this, we're able to then work with the patient to improve them. Cardiac screening is another big component of Lanzaroff at the Arts Club. Um, Cardiac uh, screening is very important in sports um, and in athletics. Um, and a lot of people are starting now to get um, conscious of how important exercise is. Um, so we're lucky that even in the lockdown, we were able to exercise as much as we can and people are encouraged to do that. But in order to be able to get the most out of your exercise, you need to work with your body. And these investigations like CPEX and cardiac imaging can tell you what you need to work on and what parameters your heart can work uh, with you so that your muscles work well, um, your metabolism gets better and you work towards achieving your goals, whether it's weight loss or generalized improvement. Um, and we have these facilities in um, Lanzaroff here on site, so we can do all of these tests, whether it's ultrasound, ECG, MRI or CPEX. COVID has changed the way we look at uh, disease in general, and it's a new condition that we're learning more and more about it every day. Unfortunately, it does target a lot of organs in the body, and once it's there, it can cause a lot of symptoms. Um, luckily, we're able to detect these on imaging, which means that as a doctor, we're able to diagnose and um, guide how severe the condition is and monitor it after the patient is treated. So we know it affects the brain and we know how it affects the brain and we're able to image that. It affects the lungs because it's mainly one of the uh, organs that the virus targets. Um, and we don't have to just image it with um, imaging techniques that have X-ray. MRI is able to look at that and we're fortunate that with this because then you can follow up the patient, you can see how well they're getting better and you're able to monitor the condition after they've had it. So post-COVID imaging is a good way of optimizing health as well, because you see how your body is after all of that. Um, and it's basically like assessing a house after a storm. You go through it, you see what needs to work, uh, you know, what, what needs to be worked on and improve it. It also affects the thyroid gland, which is one of the glands that is important for men our metabolism, and it's in the neck um, and the liver. And we're able to image that. Obesity is one of the um, big factors that affect um, how patients respond to COVID. We know that it's one of the risk factors. And if it's one thing that you need to work on, um, it would be weight and optimizing our um, um, body so that um, obesity is basically out of the equation. There is a lot of conversations now about how we do that nationally. But as individuals, we have ownership to our own bodies and we're able to work to um, treat this because it is a reversible condition. Um, Ursula, you might want to tell us about um, how um, the Lanzaroff concept of uh, weight management and how, um, what services we have that patients can access. Well, as, as we said before, we work as a team. So whoever sees the patient first, even if it's the physiotherapist or is it my, my colleague, uh, Dr. Kunz, the orthopedic surgeon, or myself, uh, everything will be assessed. So if obesity or if uh, weight loss is, uh, is the target, then obviously we start with uh, diagnosing with blood tests, with 
gut health test. So this is a stool, uh, a comprehensive stool test that we do to check the microbiome, because as you know, the microbiome is at the, sip, uh, the, the, the place where our immunity comes from, basically. And the immunity has a lot to do with uh, our weight. And we in, included in these um, blood tests, we do uh, a hormone tests, so sometimes we do also referral to hormone specialists or endocrinologists that we work together. Um, and then would, we would devise first uh, a nutrition program with um, a colleague who is specialized in nutritional medicine. Then the, the, the physiotherapist works with the patient. And uh, I myself, I'm a licensed uh, certified Maya doctor, which means that I work with a fasting program after the Austrian doctor FX Maya. And so we would devise a fasting regime for this patient it, from simple intermittent fasting, where you actually sh uh, look at the, the time uh, frame where you eat or at what you eat and how you eat. So this is very bespoke and will be accompanied with uh, proper supplementation. Uh, as you know, you know, there is no one size fits all. So we look at deficiencies. There is a micronutrient uh, panel that we do with our German partner lab laboratory where we check what deficiency a patient has. And um, um, so we can work with oral supplements or we have IV treatments in-house where we do bespoke uh, intravenous uh, nutrition. Yeah. So, uh, and all this forms a package for the patient, uh, which is bespoke. Thank you. Um, so um, one more uh, about obesity and the reason we as doctors worry about it is because it causes all of other diseases that are more serious and less reversible. Um, and Ursula has kindly uh, explained all the services that we have here on site that we are able to offer and we will um, uh, be able to explain to you how you can refer yourself or your doctor can refer you to these services. Bone health is one of the other things that we need to look at. Um, so optimizing health means that we look at the body in general and we look at different parts that we can target. Um, osteoporosis, which means weak bones, is um, multifactorial. So it can happen due to different reasons, but we're able to quantify how bad it is and we're able to reverse most of the conditions that cause osteoporosis. This causes fractures and a lot of pain and hospital admissions that are preventable. So recognizing it early is a good way of taking care of our body and bones are basically everywhere in our body so optimizing that is quite crucial. Um, how do we find patients that require um, imaging for bone health? Well we run risks assessments so when you go to your doctor they will give you different they'll ask you different questions they will look at um, other diseases that one might have and what medicines one might be taking and then assess whether there is a high risk for that and then we can screen and once we screen we're able to offer different managements and the way we do it is we um, ask the patients to come it's a 10 minute scan um, we scan the spine and the hips um, and we are able to give numbers again which means that we're able to follow up the patient and see how much improvement they're getting after the medicines. And if they're not getting the improvement that we um, look for, then we're able to modify the medicines that we give them. So being able to detect how bad um, or how much a condition is affecting the body is quite useful because then we can optimize and tailor make how we treat the patient. We can also prevent um, other conditions. So spine health is important. Um, back pain is quite debilitating and a lot more patients are coming with back pain following uh, the recent um, changes that we're seeing because we're working more from home, we're um, not as active as we used to be um, and that is something that can be quite debilitating. Um, here in Lanzarote at the Earth Club, we're able to offer very high quality imaging. Uh, we're able to diagnose the patients accurately. Uh, we have um, 
integrated that with the uh, orthopedics department and we have a fantastic program um, which uh, Dr. Kunz leads from the clinical side where we're able to um, assess the patient. Uh, we assess their spine again through things that we can measure and things that we can assess clinically. Um, and we have an entire spine lab for rehabilitation as well as diagnosis. So if we diagnose a problem, we're able to offer bespoke treatment for it based on that particular patient that can have very good outcomes. Cartilage health is another um, part that an aspect uh, that we can offer um, bespoke diagnosis and therapies for here. Um, and joints are quite important because they are uh, they help us stay mobile and they're very painful when they have problems with them. So we're able to offer um, imaging, which is quite advanced and it's not available in every department in the world, but it is available here, which is why I'm proud that um, we're able to offer this. And we can identify exactly with very high resolution imaging what is um, happening inside joints through the patient lying on a scanner for a few minutes. And we're able to offer um, advice to the doctors uh, treating them and the physios of which joints they need to focus on and how um, uh, we can monitor them over time once we've introduced these uh, improvements in their uh, lifestyle. And we've got a gait analysis lab which integrates very well with the cartilage uh, assessments from imaging perspective because we're able to assess again by looking at the patient within a very highly calibrated, uh, very high standard gait lab, how the patient uh, mobilizes, whether they have weaknesses in certain muscles that we can target with physio, whether they have problems in their joints or their back, um, whether they need insoles, and we're able to have a baseline that we can work with, with specific targets and then monitor over time. Body composition is another thing that we can identify with imaging, and it's based on the skinny fat concept. So standing on the scales does not give all the information that are useful to us as doctors. Um, it may be useful to tell us how, what our dress size is, but it doesn't give us advice about how healthy the body is. Um, but with imaging, we're able to identify where that fat is, whether it's in muscle, which we don't like, uh, whether it's in liver and it's excessive like I've discussed before or whether it's in organs that are required for it like the brain for instance and it's healthy. So we're able to identify where it is and then we can alternate and um, offer different bespoke treatments to the patients to improve their overall condition um, accordingly and we're able to monitor it. So it's a preventative uh, scan. It's only six minutes. Um, it doesn't give us information about the structure and, and the appearances of the organs. So this won't detect cancer and it won't look at the liver in as much detail of the whole body scan that I've explained before. But it's a good six minute checkup and it gives us a nice baseline. And it's quite nice to integrate that with the clinical aspect if someone is going on a um, specific diet or training for a specific uh, exercise or target. So at the end of my talk, I'd like to remind you that screening and wellness is important and optimizing health is what we want to um, focus on. Uh, we don't want um, patients to ignore their condition until it presents when it's quite advanced. Preventive medicine is here to stay and it's quite advanced now, so it's a good opportunity to take care of um, take advantages of the uh, opportunities that we have and the technology that we have and the expertise that we have in-house. Um, and a lot of these conditions are reversible and the ones that are not reversible, we're able to offer uh, early detection and early treatments for them. So the patient overall, their journey, if they need to go down the um, more serious routes is less traumatizing and has better outcomes. Um, it's important for all of us to take care of our health and I think um, we can help get most people there uh, working together with us together as a team here um, as well as with the patients. Well thank you Amanda. Uh, it, it seems that with all the diagnostics tools that we have access here to, it seems that the whole body MRI is the crown on top of the pyramid. Uh, makes me really curious. Uh, so let's go into the nitty gritty a little bit. 
um, listeners have asked, how long does the scan take? So it depends on what we're looking for, and that's why it's very important uh, that we start by having um, a medical consultation to see what the patient's risk factors um, and do some bloods um, and uh, maybe genetic testing if that's relevant to the patient. But it would go from 30 minutes uh, to about um, 90 minutes, depending on what we're looking for. Right. Uh, and do you uh, uh, inject contrast agent? For whole bodies, we don't need to, and that's fantastic. So no radiation, no contrast. The patient literally just lies down on the bed um, as it goes through, and the body reveals itself because the magnet is able to detect um, the cells and how they uh, interact with each other. Right. And if you include the brain, uh, does that um, add up in time? Yes. So in order to look at, uh, so there are some imaging of the brain, but it's not as detailed for specific conditions. Um, and it's the same for cardiac um, or heart imaging or prostate, etc. If we are looking specifically for that organ, we need to offer very high resolution uh, imaging for that specific um, organ. Um, whole body looks at literally that an overview. Um, it's an accurate overview, but it remains an overview. So it depends on what we need to do um, and what we need to look for. So what if a patient, uh, or what would be the reason that the patient can't have an MRI? So they may have a metal in their body that uh, stops us from scanning them safely. Uh, some patients don't like MRI because they feel claustrophobic. Um, so we can offer um, fast imaging for this cohort of patients. And again, we tailor it according to what they can tolerate. Um, we're able to offer a um, good uh, set of um, uh, tricks that help us uh, through the scan. So um, we can do a dry run where the patient just tries the bed and some of them feel relaxed after doing that and they're not scared of it. Um, a lot of people have been through the old scanners, which were quite tight and they were quite noisy. Um, our machine is not like that. So we give them a chance to try and to, be, to lie on the bed. And because there's no uh, radiation, there's no x-ray, it's safe. Um, we do um, some meditation. Um, we have lavender patches and things like that. We have nice music. Um, and when the patient is in the scanner, they're not scanned with us away. We're, we're literally there. So if they want to stop anytime, they can. Um, but if they absolutely can't have MRI, then we can image with other um, imaging modalities, such as ultrasound, which we have here inside. Um, and some imaging like the bone osteoporosis, it's not the MRI. We, we do it with another machine. Right. So how, how often can you have a scan? Is there a, a time limit or do you have to wait for a certain time until you, you re-scan? So if we're doing it for screening, most people will do it every year. Um, if we find something that needs follow-up, we might need to do um, another scan in six months, maybe only targeted or focused on that area that needs um, the follow-up or maybe another scan. Again, it depends on what the patient's condition is. Right. So do you want to explain a little bit what happens if you find something? So um, if we find something and um, we discuss it with a doctor that referred them, and this remains um, an examination referred by a doctor because it, it, it does look for medical conditions. So we need to be able to discuss that with your doctor as well. Um, if your doctor is from outside the Lanzarov, then we discuss that with them and with you, and we offer you a support through that journey if you need to be referred to another expert um, in another field. Um, if it's in-house, then we have a team of doctors here that are able to manage most of the conditions we find. And if we need to refer, then we also have a, so a network with other um, experts in uh, different body um, organs and body parts that we can support you and offer you um, we can suggest advice about where you might want to go and have that checked. Uh, but throughout the journey, the patient is, is the decision maker. We're here to support them um, and to offer them opportunities to optimize their health. 
Yes, so um, the qu a question just came in, if we offer the scans now? Uh, we can offer the scans now, we're a clean site, so luckily we're open for business and we do all the precautions uh, so that we, um, the site remains a clean site. Um, and when the patients book the scans, we run through safety questionnaires, etc., to make sure that uh, we're able to offer it. But we have the technology and the protocols, um, we have the local expertise to do it, um, and we're able to, to welcome the patients onto our facility now. So uh, now we come to more specific questions from our callers. Uh, so what happens if someone had, uh, has rods due to a scoliosis? So the patient can have the scan. It's not, uh, it doesn't stop them from having the scan because these are medical um, implants that the doctors have put in and they're MRI safe. We would still ask some questions about them when they were uh, put in um, and things like that. Um, but they can have the scans. Okay, so um, another question uh, about uh, gut health. So could you see chronic inflammation of the gut? So the protocols for whole body don't look at bowel. Um, there are other scans that we can offer that looks at bowel. Um, and most of the screening for bowel is through cameras. So um, it's or a capsule that a patient ingests and it goes through their um, um, intestines and bowel and looks at things. So we work with different colleagues in different specialties. So we, we do offer gut health, but it won't be through whole body. Imagine. Yeah, I would, I would say to that question that we would do uh, blood and stool analysis first and, uh, and then endoscopic uh, uh, analysis, yeah. Uh, because you probably need to take samples and you couldn't do that with a, with a scan anyway, yeah. Uh, the, another question uh, is asked, uh, for cardiac assessment, does whole body MRI provide information similar to a CT angiogram? Um, so we have separate cardiac MRIs that do have similar uh, capabilities, but it depends on the clinical question again. Um, so, um, Cardiac MRI is a whole repertoire of protocols and imaging, um, and each one is specifically tailored toward looking at a specific question, uh, which is why we have a cardiologist inside, and he's quite exper uh, experienced in um, sports-related heart conditions and uh, older people uh, heart conditions, and we tailor the protocols accordingly. But the short answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, another question is, uh, what kind of diagnostics would you recommend in case of severe migraine to, de to detect if there are any anomalies in the brain? Uh, so that would require a brain specialist to look at a neurologist um, through assessments and there are um, headache clinics um, which are run um, and then depending on what their initial assessment, there are different protocols that we can do for the brain to pick up different um, causes that may be, or reasons why the patient may have these symptoms. Yeah. Uh, another question is, are there any restrictions if somebody had Botox? Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, what MR pulse sequence are, they, are you using for the whole body imaging? Uh, so that's slightly outside the talk. It's more for uh, colleagues' uh, discussion, uh, but we use different ones depending on what we're looking for, and we do um, hybrid imaging, uh, so we correlate anatomical with functional uh, sequences. Okay, so uh, the next question is what about the costs for the whole body MRI, and uh, will, will the, the insurances cover it? So insurance is covered because it's important and this is why I went through the journey of the science behind screening um, and that's why insurance covers it because it, it's better for patients to screen patients and pick up pathology early on. Um, the cost will depend on what um, protocol we're doing and this is why we usually give the uh, fees after the doctor's consultation and formal referral. Um, so we need a referral form from a doctor to be able to tell you what body parts we're imaging, what kind of protocol and um, the cost for that. Yeah. 
So when, when one of us uh, writes a referral, so we have different um, referral protocols in-house, and if we get uh, a referral from outside, you deal with that uh, in your department. Yes, but it's a conversation between myself and the uh, referring doctor. So it's a discussion about what we need to image. And that's usually guided by what they found from their discussion with the patient, uh, the risk factors the, uh, and their examination and the blood tests. Yes. Uh, and another question came in, how much can my diet help prevent the problems uh, you've mentioned? Well, I think this is more for me. Uh, a healthy diet helps with everything that goes without saying. Uh, and obviously there are certain things that apply to everybody, you know, get healthy sleep, eat your vegetables every day. Uh, if you eat carbs, make sure that you do enough exercise. Uh, drink enough liquid uh, water. Um, and then obviously, according to your own specific health issues or health, um, uh, you need to, to deal with, with different things. Yeah. So what exactly you eat, if you have a gluten intolerance or if there is cancer in the family. Uh, so it's, it's very bespoke, right? And it's not only important what you eat, but how you eat and when you eat. Yeah, I think these were all the questions that are on my screen. I think um, if there are no further questions, uh, thank uh, you. Sorry, just one more thing to say. So um, the MRI can be a, quite a long examination. Uh, so we've tailored how the patient's experience here in Lanzarov is for that. Um, and um, I think we're the only facility in London that has access to um, Netflix and, and, and uh, TV shows and music uh, on the scanner. Um, we also have uh, aromatherapy and various breathing exercises and things that the patient can do so that they're really relaxed on the scanner. Um, with studies that are about uh, an hour, like the whole body, we find a lot of patients sleeping very peacefully on the scanner while they're having it done. Um, so it really enhances the patient experience. Beautiful. So you are really looking after the patients. We try. Okay. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was really a lot of information and uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'd just like to echo Ursula's uh, words. Uh, Dr. Amanda, that was like an invaluable talk really and uh, what a breadth of uh, diagnostic testings and treatments and preventative care Lanzerhof at the Arts Club does offer. It's, it's amazing really. Um, if uh, anyone would like to get in touch with uh, Dr. Isaac or Dr. Levine, please email dr.isaac, I-S-A-A-C, at lhtac.com um, or Ursula on dr.levine, L-E-V-I-N-E, -E, at lhtac.com. Thank you so much for joining and uh, wishing everyone a great rest of the evening. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.